Welcome everyone, this is our Wednesday Wisdom where we go over tips, tricks, and information on band instrument repair. Today we're going to be talking about what type of thickness pad that you need when you're installing saxophone pads. Uh, this was kind of in relation to a viewer requested video that we did last week, which was how to level traditional saxophone pads. We're also going to talk about the different thicknesses uh, that you can obtain using Neo pads. And the best way to do that is with a Neo pad spud. That's our hashtag for today. Uh, so make sure you take Neopad Spud, put that in the comments below. That's going to be entering you into a drawing for 10% off any Neopad set that we have available, Alto, Tenor, or Barry. It's a great prize. We've had a lot of people comment on videos in the past, so make sure you put your comments in so you can win prizes. Now, this week's winner is going to get 15% off of any of the courses that you see for 2023. So when I announce this person's name, that person is going to get 15% off any of the tuitions for the courses that we have coming up in January, February, particularly the basics for saxophone, basics done right for saxophone on February 20th through 23rd. That's an in-person course. You guys should get down here. It's beautiful weather in February, and that will give you a chance to learn some of these basic concepts uh, hands-on with a group of your peers and Pirettes, and Brian will be here teaching with you. So make sure you It'll take the, the, the Neo Pad Spud. Make sure you put that in the comments below. Okay, so the winner uh, for this week is <laughs> David Wozniak. David sent me an email. Congratulations, sir. Send me an email to rich, R-I-C-H, at musicmedic.com, and we will get you your prize of 15% off any tuition. Now, Ryan, we also had a Nappert regional clinic yes this past weekend that you yep. did this past weekend in greensboro north carolina shout out to melody choplin as well as john goodman for hosting all of the amazing yes. clinicians great and time excellent great technicians time. we talked a little bit about ryan's engraving techniques and ryan also went over some neopad details we're going to expand upon that a little bit today uh so ryan let's dive right into it's not how you die this is it right dive. Oh, so i go pee first <laughs> dive uh, with a lot of things. Um, so let's talk about why is pad thickness important when we're installing saxophone pads? Absolutely. It, it's very important, uh, especially if you want that pad to seal. If you don't want that pad to seal, not important at all. Mm. You can just forget about it. Okay. But if you want that pad to seal, we do. pad thickness is very, very important. Um, again, you know, you should go through the four or five variables, you know, dry fitting, key fitting, all that fun stuff. Uh, but I'm going to draw a couple examples on a pad that's too thin, a pad that's too thick, and a pad that is just right. Oh, uh, very good. Mm. Chef's kiss of just right. So this is too thin. Okay. So you have your tone hole. Okay, there it is right there. Mm -hmm. all Drawn right. to scale. Uh, if good. you have a pad, when it comes down... There's our cutaway of our pad cup. There's the spine leading up to it. Uh, if you have a pad that, let's say, is too thin, okay, here we are, one that's too thin, what you're going to get is, first off, the protrusion is not going to be right, okay? Um, and the most important thing that you're going to find is when you have a pad that is too thin, you're going to get leaks in the back, hmm. okay? I'm going to write that out. Leak in back. Okay. Um, and what a lot of times you'll, you'll find is guys that use pads that are too thin, they're trying to push this up and trying to get this to, so the pad is in here all kind of wonky. Rather than being in here like this, it's kind of, and they're trying to get rid of this leak in the back. But if you have one that's too thin, it's going to be very difficult. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, if it's too thick, so here's our tone hole, here's our pad cup, there's our spine coming back from it. If my pad is too thick, here it is, way too thick, boom. There's our pad. What you'll find, first <laughs> off, whoa, keep it together, Rich. Uh, Sorry about that. <laughs> what you'll find is, first off, you notice how the pad is coming down kind of like this, and the, we have it where it's hitting in the back. We're going to have a leak in the front, okay? So either you're going to have a leak in the front, with a pad that's too thick or one that's too thin, you're going to have it leaking in the back. Too thin, it's going to hit in the front. Too thick, it's going to hit in the back. Okay? A lot of times you'll see this where, you know, guys will try to push this up here and it'll be, again, you know, the pad protrusion won't be even. It'll be kind of wonky like this. Okay, so one that is just right. Ah, uh, yes. The pad 
that fits just right. So here's our tone hole, here's our pad cup, there's our spine coming off. We have a pad in here that is just right. And you'll notice the pad protrusion, north, south, east, and west, is even. And with that pad being the correct thickness, it's going to come down. And when that pad closes, it's going to close nice and evenly. Too thin, hitting in the front, leaking in the back. Too thick, the opposite, hitting in the back, leaking in the front. And one that's just right, the Goldilocks of pads. This one's just right. It seals perfectly. Okay. So very good. So there you, you go. Yeah. So when you have, should a, I draw my, my turkey? Uh, uh, well, it is that time of year. It is. It's getting there. <clears throat> let, let me ask you this, Ryan. What do you do when you do not have the correct thickness? Of the okay. Pad? Say you have the scenario too thin or too, too thick. Too thin. Perfect. If you have a pad, let's say too thin and you're using regular tan pads, you can actually move up. We have a couple different thickness of pads. So here's our traditional, you know, standard tan pad. And then we have a soft feel pad and it's a little bit thicker. That mm. felt is just a little bit thicker. If you need extra, you can go with the soft feel thick. Okay. And you can okay. see with our, our fancy camera here, the thickness difference between a standard tan pad and a soft feel thick. There is about a half millimeter yes. thickness. So there is a difference, difference. in mm -hmm. the pads themselves. So if you're using, let's say, a standard and you have something that's too thin, you can either go up to the soft feel or the soft feel thick. Let's say, you know, you don't have the luxury of being able to stock multiple pads. I have the luxury here working at, at Saks Pro Shop at Music Medic. I can just walk over to the pad room and say, hey, guys, can you make me a whatever pad that's a little bit thicker? Mm -hmm. Making custom pads. That is also an option. But let's say you need have a customer that needs it done right away. Yeah. Which they Most all do. Of the time. They yep. all do. They got a gig that night. I bet you do. Okay. What you can do is you can use these guys right here, which are just shims. Okay. So um, what you would do is let's say you're using a pad that's too thin. Uh, you would just add a, th a shim to the back, and that overall gets you a little bit thicker of a pad. And Ryan, can you talk about your shimming technique? I sure can. Very briefly. Okay. So let's say this is a pad cup. I know this is my hand, but let's say for, for demonstration purposes, this is my pad cup. What I will do is I will heat the pad cup up shellac uh, with, um, you know, air torch or regular torch. I will take a stick of shellac because that is my preferred method or preferred adhesive. I will coat the inside of the pad cup with just a thin layer of shellac enough so that I can stick my shim in there. Okay. And then I install my pad like normal. So I would take my pad that has the reso on it. I would apply shellac to the back of it. I would squish that on a cold bench block that would flatten out the, the shellac. And then I would heat the pad cup up from the bottom. I don't want to heat it up from this way. Okay. I don't want to burn that, that shim. Heat it up from the bottom when everything is nice and hot. I then install my pad like normal. And that added thickness uh, from the shim will just make basically give you a thicker pad. Now, Ryan, they can also use a little more glue, right? Yes, it's, it's you can amount. use just a little bit more adhesive. And it, it, it's just micro adjustments. You can't go from, let's say, like a standard tan to a soft feel thick by using more shellac. It just becomes very messy. But you can make those micro adjustments. So it okay. is possible. All right, very good. Now that covers traditional pads. Let's talk about how to change the thickness on a Neopad. Ooh, very easy. So a couple things with the Neopad. First off, here is a Neopad. Boom. It says it right there. Neo. It's a pad. Neopad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there it says it on the back. Music Medic. There's, it's a 48.5. Um, one thing about Neopads is when we make the actual Neopad themselves, they are all the same thickness. Okay. So what determines the height or, or gives you a quote-unquote thicker Neopad is the bases or the spuds. So just about every Neopad in there, you can see the back of it right there. If we go to the next one, there are our three different sized spuds. We have the standard spud, which is included with the Neopad. They also have a medium spud and then a tall spud. Okay, let me give you those guys that are interested in numbers. I'm gonna right. give you some measurements here. So this is the thickness of a standard this is what's included with Neopads, which is about 0 0.6, 0 0.61 millimeters thick. Okay. And this is a standard spud included with Neopads. If you want to go up to the medium, the thickness on the base is 1.06. So it's like, a, what is that? Like almost a half millimeter thicker. So if they need that extra thick pad, they can choose that 
the medium base. Exactly. And if you need a really plug. thick base, you can go with the tall, which is 1.58, so 1 1.6, uh, if I'm rounding up, uh, millimeters. So depending on the style of your pad cup, uh, depending on the pad cup geometry, how it comes and, and relates to the tone hole, uh, will determine on what size spud you can use. My tip is, um, if you're ever encountering a, um, a King Super 20 or, or a Zephyr with those pad cups that are very, they're, they're almost domed, okay? So they have a lot of space here. I would consider using the tall spud, okay? okay? Purely because that pad cup is very deep. Uh, on the other hand, if you're, you're working on a horn that has maybe, let's say, sh very shallow pad cups, you would just use the regular standard. And then you have that medium one in there to kind of, you know, play around if you need to. Okay. So, so Ryan, can you, you show go. us uh, how to change a spud? I sure can. Let me grab my mm, demo nice. horn. And this is one of our Wilmington horns that has all Neopads in it. Uh, I'm going to replace this one in the E flat. This is the one we've been working with. This guy out of the way. Mm -hmm. So here we are. Here's my Neopad. You're, there you can see it. I'm not lying. It does say Neopad and it does pivot. Let's say we need to change whatever base. Now in here, I, I believe we put from our last video is the tall. So okay. it's the very tallest one. Let's say we want to move it back down to the standard. Okay. Super easy to change out. The first thing you'll need to do is just pop that pad out. And this is as easy as getting something behind it and popping it out. Oh, that was fast. Like so. Okay. Super easy. And you can see the pad pop right out. And you notice the base is still there. Okay. It's still glued in. And this is, again, the tall. So that's like that 1.6 millimeter base. And I want to I move that down. Okay. So. All right. Let me get that. Back to me. There. Back to me. Oh, okay. <laughs> and we're back. Um, very easy to take this out. These are installed using our rubber toughened super glue, the tire glue. Okay. Um, very easy. So for this, I'm going to be using a scraper. I see a lot of guys that like to use screwdrivers to pry things. Screwdrivers are for screwing in screws, not for prying things. Don't do that. Um, so I'm going to use my scraper and it's very easy if I get under there, give a little wiggle like I'm doing some engraving here. It should just pop right out. Oh, okay. You can see there it is. I popped it out. I have a little bit of glue residue. There's a couple different ways you can remove that glue residue. You can use a debonder, put a little bit of that on there, let it sit for a little bit, wipe it up with whatever, or you can use a scraper like I'm going to do here, which is I'm just going to scrape this. And I'm not using a pad slick. So nope. you're, you're using a bit of a sharp scraper there. Yes, this does have a bit of an edge to it. It is, a, it is the world's best scraper. Mm -hmm. I'm not calling it that. That's the actual name. Very cool. And I happen to agree with that. Um, so I am using a sharp scraper to clean off all that residue. You can also use other means. Uh, you can use a bristle disc at a various grit to clean up. But the big thing is that center right there where that spud is going to be glued is nice and clean. You can see right there. Scraped. No more adhesi adhesive. Okay. And then if you want to, you can give it a couple little scratches. That way that super glue really attaches. So. Whoa, okay. rhyming. hi -oh. Scratches lets the glue attaches. All yeah. right. There you go. Very good. So the first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to install the new spud that we're going to be using into the back of our Neopad. So this is our small spud right here. All right. Okay. Or, sorry, our standard spud, which is much shorter than the tall spud that we had in there. Okay. Now, if we go to a quick picture, you'll see there on the back of a Neopad, that slot, okay, the north-south slot. Uh, if we go to a picture of a spud, corresponding spud, there it is. You can see right in the center there, that little yellow circle is actually highlighting a very important feature of the Neopad spud, which is that pin. That pin needs to fit in that slot in that north-south arrangement of that back of that pad. There it is right there. Um, and this is, this is what prevents the Neopad from completely spinning around 360 degrees, okay? It will still allow it to pivot and rotate, or sorry, to pivot, um, but it does not allow it to rotate. So, very easy to install this. What I will do is I will hold my pad, there it is right there, with the slot in a north-south arrangement. So there it is, north-south, there's my slot. 
And then what I'm going to do, and I'm going to use pair of tweezers here because I got a bit of the shakes today. Mm. Too much coffee. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I'm going to arrange my pin so that it is also facing north. Okay, it's going to be tough to see, but I face my pin north. My slot is in a north position. Once I line everything up, it snaps in like so. Super easy. There we go. I didn't break off my pin on my spud. Good. And now you can see how it rotates. Or sorry, it pivots. Gotcha. It does not rotate. It pivots. So now installing is super easy. All I'm going to do is take a little bit of my rubber toughened glue, add just a little dab to the back of the spud. There it is, about like that. You can see there's my dab. Then I'm going to install this into the pad cup. I have to make sure I have even clearance all the way around the pad so that it does actually flex and rotate, or sorry, it flexes, pivots, mm -hmm. okay. Tilts. Tilts. And once the glue is dried, you're done. So wait a minute, Ryan, you're telling me That's that it. all you do is take a little bit of super glue, put it on the back of the correctly uh, heighted spud, yeah. made it up, heighted spud, heighted. Uh, the correct height spud, Put it in and that's, that's it. it. Done. That's it. The one thing I've been saying about Neopads is once you install wow. Neopads, you don't have to install Neopads. So it's it. If you're working with Tradish pads, mm. which I'm trying to make it happen, Tradish, um, <laughs> once you install that pad, you then have to assemble the key and then you have to do more installation. More level. Where you have to heat it up and you have to make sure it's level. You're poking things. You're, you're pushing things. You're doing this. With the Neopad, because of that self-leveling feature, once you install the pad, you put it on, when you close that key, it's going to whoop, level itself. Mm -hmm. Done. That's crazy. Done. It and is. fast and awesome. I know. I know. It takes me longer cool. to actually describe how to install Neopads than it does for me to actually do it. So. Well, Ryan, thank you so much for that excellent demonstration. You're if gobble, you had... gobble. If you have any questions, it is that time of year. It is. If you have any questions about that, put them in the comments below. Make sure that you also take Neopad Spud. Put that in the comments below. That's going to be entering you into next week's drawing for 10% off of any Neopad set. Alto Tenor Barry, Ryan, and Leroy will be here next week talking to you about how to swedge clarinet keys. And we will announce the winner there. So Dave Wozniak, this week's winner of 15% off any of our Music Medic classes that are happening in 2023. Make sure you get up with me. Uh, that is going to do it for now. So until next time. Like, share, and subscribe. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Or not. But please do. <laughs> <laughs> Happy repair. Happy repairing. <laughs>